America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. Do you like to meditate? Have you tried to meditate? Have you struggled with meditation? Why don't you visit one of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center? Visit brahmakumaris.org. Blaylock Dialysis Center is a convenient state-of-the-art dialysis center in the Houston area, run by Dr. Panakin Patel. Relax in a comfortable environment while receiving quality care. Serving adults 18 to geriatrics, we are here to help you. Call 713 463 6611 for more information or visit us at our website at www.blaylockdialysiscenter.com. Blaylock Dialysis Center, where helping you get well is our priority. The Meditation Museum in Silver Spring, Maryland offers a variety of courses and activities to make your life go a whole lot smoother. Located at 9525 Georgia Avenue, you will be able to experience the beautiful silence that's in the space. There are courses in Raj Yoga Meditation, Positive Thinking, Stress-Free Living, and Personal Development classes. For more information, call us at 301-588-0144 or visit us online at meditationmuseum.org. Get off the grid and step inside your heart. Sister Jenna guides you through a powerful, encouraging, and motivating meditation that allows you to let go and become aware of you, regain strength, power, and peace. I'm Roger Nelson. I'm the founder and director of the Global Consciousness Project, and you are listening to America Meditating Radio Show. Feel where your hands are. 
and whether your fingers are curled over or straight. Feel where your body makes contact with the furniture. Notice the curve in your spine in your lower back. middle of your back, the curve in your neck, notice the angle of your head and whether your teeth are together or slightly apart. Feel the texture of your clothing on your skin. Notice the temperature of your body. Sense the weight of your legs and your arms. head, sense the weight of your whole body, notice how still your body is, and how calm you are. Be present to your body here in this place. For a few more moments, rest in the stillness. Mm, welcome, everyone. That was Here and Now Meditation by Carmen Warrington, and I'm your host, Sister Jenna. It's always so good to have you join us for heartfelt conversations and experiences of truth, experiences of reality, experiences of a higher sense of ourselves and a sense of importance. Um, I was in a meeting yesterday and having a discussion about building bridges between cultures and in the conversation really came about just the incredible amount of deception that's on our planet, uh, everywhere from east to west, north and south. And so that external deception that we're witnessing with leadership especially, which is where the amplification tends to trickle down from, it's us. How much have you lived your life really being very, very present, very, very truthful, very, very real and and when you are engaged in a conversation or in a moment with another person, how much are you really you? You know, the one without the many masks that you wear and, and wanting to show people something that you think they need so that they can give you what you want. And to what extent have we actually lived our lives unlimited? Unlimited for me is decoded in terms of someone doesn't like me, but I can like them anyway. Unlimited for me is that I, I live with, you know, either my husband, my wife, my children, my dog, my cat in a particular country, but I'm just a trustee in this relationship. It's not that I own it and they don't own me. Unlimited to me is that I'm not just the color of my skin or the gender that I'm playing my part in. Unlimited to me is the quality that I bring into the gender that I'm in, the color of the skin that my karmas have created for me as a result of my choices of the past. You know, we have uh, morning classes every day at the museum. And in today's class, and we always call God Baba, Baba was sharing that you take birth, you know, in rebirth and karmically you'll always be different because your energy is always changing. And so every experience that you have now or every experience that you've had in your past, they are contributing to your future features, your future gender, your future situation, your future circumstances, because that vibration is sitting very deeply in the soul and that subconscious energy is what's creating our destiny and our future. I just want to ask, offer you a chance to think about that because I feel that we're at a time of really decoding our lives 
at a very, very vast level because this is no time for us to sleep and not uh, transform ourselves by not paying attention to what our thoughts are saying to us or our feelings are saying to us or our, uh, the vibrations are, are signaling to us. And that takes me to one of our return guests, um, Penny Pierce. Uh, Penny is a well-respected international expert on intuition and perception. An author and popular lecturer and trainer, Penny is one of the early pioneers in the intuition development movement. She's been specializing in intuition development, inner energy dynamics, expanded perception, transformation, even dream work. She has worked throughout the U.S., Europe, Japan, South America since 1977 in coaching business and government leaders, psychologists, scientists, celebrities, and even those on the spiritual path about the hidden dynamics of what makes for true success. She's authored quite a few books, including The Transformation Trilogy, Frequency, The Power of Personal Vibration, which I love, The Intuitive Way, and Leap of Perception, The Transformation warming power of your attention. Today we welcome our friend back to the air. Penny, welcome and good morning. Hi, it's nice to be back. Mm-hmm. Did you hear my earlier conversation? You I know, did, about I did. Many good this points. En- liked it. This energy that we're in right now of um, such an amplified state of deception. I was talking to my producer this morning and we were saying, gosh, when have you ever heard historically this word of impeachment Every time now, it's like <clears throat> it's happening over here, it's happening over there. We're claiming that our future president, he's going to be impeached. It just keeps coming up. And so, you know, there's a lot happening on the level of consciousness. But since you are an intuitive expert, intuitively, Penny, what are the thoughts or the feelings that you are realizing as a result of these current times? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's that's huge. Mm. Well, I've been talking a lot in my books about the transformation process and the stages we go through as we you know, become more transformed. And a lot of that is, is basically due to clearing our, now I call it our clutter, you know, the subconscious blocks and fears and fixed beliefs and contractions that we hold in ourselves. And as the energy on the planet gets faster and faster, my sense is that the subconscious stuff that we used to be able to to suppress and deny and pretend wasn't there now can't doesn't have anywhere to hide so it's kind of popping up into our conscious minds now and mm-hmm. that is very uncomfortable at both an individual level and at a societal level you know so for an individual when that stuff comes up we get you know often events up. Uh, happening in our life again that are parallel to the original events, something upsetting, a trauma, a drama. And in society, of course, it comes out in the, in the news. So addressing the idea of deception and, and all of that, I think that when this stuff comes up, our first re- reaction is to try to push it down again and not yeah, have to deal yeah. with it, you know? Right, and right. and then we try to, we, we do fight or flight methodologies to deal with it. We either avoid it, ignore it, leave our bodies, hand over our power to other people. That would be avoidance. Or the fight me- variety would be control everything, be a narcissist, be so strong that it, nobody doubts who you are. And I see, I think we're seeing both sides of that coming up now, because as the subconscious opens, when we deal with fear, um, basically we're dealing with oppositional thinking, conflict thinking, black and white, this and that. We forget how many other positions there are around the circle. We're just taking two, you know, and that's part of the clearing process, but it is really unpleasant, <laughs> you know. It's unpleasant. Uh, I know it's an opportunity, but it, it's really kind of helping us to become very clean inside if we're willing to stand on the side of awakening. And your new book is The Leap of Perception, The Transforming yeah. Power of Your Attention. Mm-hmm. And I would love for you to talk to our listeners about what that means because it seems to be a time that we are being called to pay a very deep attention to what we're going through at an intuitive level. I, I agree. Really, the the book is about the idea that when we talk about transformation, 
part of it is an energy process, that the energy is increasing quite a bit on the planet and then in our bodies, and then that affects our emotions and our mind. You know, everything's kind of r- ramping up, and that causes us to go through various changes. But it also affects consciousness in a huge way. So this book is about the shift of consciousness we're going through from an old kind of perception to a new kind of perception. And the old one is linear, and it's very left-brained. It's, you know, you have past, present, future all separated by supposed empty space, you know, or you have plot lines in the story, story storylines. Everything's in lines, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. And what that does is it causes us to have a perception of separation. You know, I'm here, you're over there, there's empty space in between us. We'd have to use willpower to cross that space or to, I have a goal, I place it in the future, so I have to cross empty space to get to that goal. So that's old, you know, and I think things are speeding up so much right now that everything's coming into kind of a vast present moment. You know, we're finding almost immediate repercussions to things that we do or say anymore. And that also means that you can materialize things very quickly or dematerialize them more quickly than ever. Because there is no long linear process anymore. If you put your attention on something fully in the moment, it happens. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so the old thing of linear is changing into what I've been calling spherical and holographic perception. And maybe the simple way to understand that is to realize that, especially when you meditate, you usually feel this, that when you close your eyes, you feel your energy, and your energy is spherical. Everybody, right. you know, clairvoyants always say that, that the aura is spherical. And um, so your energy goes out around you equidistantly in all directions, and so you're in the center of that ball of, of energy and consciousness. But what's interesting is that that ball, depending on your own frequency that you hold, um, if you're meditating, it might expand out and get really quite large. If you're, like, mm-hmm. cooking dinner, it might be small. You're cutting a vegetable. You know, come down and in and get very physical. So there are different frequencies of our consciousness, you know, and, but they're all inside the ball. Everything's inside mm-hmm. the ball. As you increase your frequency, the ball expands, and you can be very inclusive. You can think about the whole world inside of you, or the whole solar mm-hmm. system, if you want. You know, and so that so we're we, it's like a zoom lens on a camera. Your ball well, gets large, small, and in between. Right. Well, you know, you you are outlining in this new book that attention skill, and yeah. right now we barely pay attention for more than fifteen <laughs> seconds because everything is so so fast. I know. That will be like the hallmark of the intuitive age perception. Yes. What are some of the new attention skills that you can share with our listeners, or how best can we at least develop one or two techniques that can mm-hmm. expand this ball? of attention, yeah. which we have an attention deficit, but an attention well, I know, expansion. <laughs> I think attention is interesting to talk about just for a minute on its own because usually we talk about intention, which mm-hmm. to me, is, I mean, it's a very common phrase today that we have, I, my intention is to do this or I'm intending to create that, but that is futurizing the idea and using willpower. So that idea of intention comes out of an unconscious sort of geometry of, of perception that, that is about linear perception. It's like your goal is outside of you. You have to focus on it, bring it to you through willpower. That is old. The new way is attention, which is in the present moment. When you place attention on something, you make a live connection with it. And the more you pay attention you go farther and farther into, let's say it's an object, you know, like your pen. <laughs> you know, if you pay attention to it, you can feel almost go down and into the molecules and the particles of light that are inside, and then all that's kind of conscious. You know, mm-hmm. every every and every piece of energy is also a piece of consciousness. They're right. totally interconnected. So, um, yeah, so attention causes you to actually merge with the physical world. And then you engage in the moment, and then you, what you find is the self or presence, again, inside of everything. And that gives you a feeling of kinship, you know, with the world, realizing, oh, wait a minute, it is me forming itself into all these different forms, the raw material of the self forming into all these forms. And that's so important today, to, to be able to 
do that means you have to leave your left brain and move into your right brain and drop mm. into your body and get quiet because, remember, the left brain is language. Mm-hmm. And it, the way to get out of it is stop talking you know, a little bit, especially with your self-talk during the day. Just take some time mm-hmm. to just be quiet. Just stop the internal dialogue. And you'll immediately go into this immersion state where you're one with the, the moment and one with everything in the moment that's occurring. And when you do that, you get saturated with what do you call it, the unified field. You know, you start to feel like the imaginal realm is there and you can create anything you want out of it. You have free reign to pick any variables you want and make it happen if you want. So part of the skill, I've actually listed quite a number of attention skills that are going to be part and parcel of the intuition age, which I, I that's just my term to talk about what's coming after the information age. Because I think we are moving from the left brain to the right brain, and into the body and into the field, and that requires intuition in order to know this kind of stuff. You know, now, so part let's of, say, so let's say there's a secular person that happened to bump on the radio show today, and 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 we've heard about intuit, intuition, and they have an idea of what it is, but they still need like a clear introduction of what is actually intuition when we try to decode it for ourselves like sometimes people might think you're kind of daydreaming or it's an aha moment or you kind of sense something is happening ahead of time you get this gut feeling but is there like a real simplistic language that you could educate somebody who wants to know more about what is intuition when we think about it i think of it as direct knowing where you don't go through a whole lot of logic and proof and uh, linear process A equals B equals C, you know, like, and, and you have it all at once knowing in one moment, and it usually happens sometimes in the early stages, it'll come through one of the senses. You know, you get vis- a vision, the light bulb goes off, you get a little voice in your head telling you, oh, don't leave, you know, leave the house now to be on time, uh, mm-hmm. or a vibration. So you Mm -hmm. get vibes and and you get chills and, you you know, people get Mm -hmm. physical symptoms sometimes that are very intuitive. Mm -hmm. I call those your truth and anxiety signals. And and you can learn to find what yours are and pay attention when you contract. Maybe it's not a good choice for you, you know, or maybe there's some missing piece of information. So a lot of it involves listening to your body and the direct signals you get via energy. And then the next level really is about your the senses and working with all the senses, whether you, you um, maybe some people can smell things or they have a, a feeling of a bad taste in their mouth. You know, it comes all different mm-hmm. ways for different people. Okay. Okay. You know, and, and now, sometimes... What if you don't even get any of those feelings? Would you then say that you're just not an intuitive person? And no, if you're I, not, you're an not intuitive... noticing your intuition. Ah, because everyone does have that. Because using it. All the time. Uh, uh-huh. We read people. We know whether a space is going to be harmonious or not if we walk into it. We do get a sense of when to leave the house or timing. Right. On things. We have a lot of senses of, of how we know things, when somebody's mm-hmm. telling the truth or not, or, you know, so many things. But we don't call them out and focus on them so that we know that that's what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, let's just say that we are a work in progress, which we all are, and <laughs> and the times are intense. Technology is moving very fast. We are completely conditioned and brainwashed to adapt more to that way of thinking rather than pay attention to these very subtle intuitive signals that do occur perhaps especially when you're taking a shower or when you're really, really relaxed, uh, your signals do emerge more than anything else. In your book, do you have a particular technique that can help people to go into a deeper state of relaxation or contemplation for them to be able to hear more of what's happening inside of their own narrative? I ha- There's... Among all my books, there's lots and lots of meditations. But one of them is it's very simple. You just imagine that you have your diamond light self. That's your energy body or a version of you that's totally clear and, and has no fear and no blockages. Mm-hmm. And that person, he or she, is standing behind your back, puts their hands on your shoulders, 
and you start to raise your vibration up to match that level. And then they step inside you and settle in and match up your body part for part. So like you get a a diamond light brain and a diamond light blood and diamond light eyeballs and diamond light bones, you know, and everything comes in and takes over bit by bit until the diamond light body is running the show. And it knows everything. It's not blocked. It's it's the, your wise self. And also it has right. a very high, clean energy. So right. as you let that take over, you realize, oh, wait a minute, I am that bo- that self. <laughs> you know, here right. I am. I'm here now. And then you can get really quiet and allow that light to just work on you. Just ask for it to clear you up in your brain or wherever there's any contractions to soften it. And I like that because it's very quick. Once you learn mm-hmm. to do it, you can almost have it happen instantly then. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you'd say that we're really in a time where we're becoming more aware of that because, you know, sometimes pain tends to push you in another place of power. Even though we don't like to go through the pain process, it is helping us in another way. So with the pain that we're going through nationally, maybe personally, um, would you say that it's moving many of us as Americans especially to become more intuitive? I think that it's growing. I I still think Mm. most people are in reactionary states at this point. But there's Mm. enough of people who are opening up and facing things and going with the flow, you know, going surfing the wave, going with it and adapting to the wave, that they're becoming very clear. And then if they get together in groups, you know, then they attract other people who are curious. And I think this is what's going to happen. It's just layer by layer people who are closest to the vibration will start to wake up more and then the next layer and the next layer because wait a minute i might be missing out on something here maybe i should listen to what these people are saying and and then i think the, the vibration on the planet is going up so much that when you start to see narcissistic behavior and mm. really self-centered stuff where you're not a, aware of other people that it just seems so stupid honestly yeah. it's like old and dinosaur behavior And where Mm -hmm. most people are going into collective consciousness understanding now and Mm -hmm. starting to see how everything fits together and everybody helps everybody and that we need all kinds of people and we need all kinds of countries working together. You know, that is the trend, you know, and people who are bucking that because they want to maintain control and power are just, they're like dinosaurs, and I think mm-hmm. what will happen is that that kind of consciousness basically is just going to shoot itself in the foot. It will not survive. You know, yeah, in that's the what long I was run. sharing in my meeting yesterday, that I don't know how long this energy can really sustain itself. I think so what we call in Indian culture, it's so Maya-driven. It's an illusion. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. illusions can only last for so long. And so at some point it has to kind of self-destroy itself because it's not real. And also, it's true, but it's also the fact that in order to really be healthy, I think we have to use both the left brain and the right brain in a kind of a figure-eight way. And that would be also like masculine energy, feminine energy, yin-yang, that we have to replenish ourselves in the right brain. That's why we sleep and we dream. You know, the right brain is where we finally get to be our spirit again and be really deep and quiet and, you know, like an animal almost sometimes. Um, But if we don't replenish ourselves from the feminine side, and the divine feminine, then the the masculine starts getting wounded. Do you know that that doing, acting, compartmentalizing part of ourselves just gets more brittle? Right, because that's what you've identified with for so long. That's just who you think you are. Mm -hmm. So when it gets challenged and it's limited... Very right, limited right, and very, very limited. Um, fragile, right. because it needs needs to let go and not just maintain control of its own self, which is what ego is. I'm alone mm-hmm. in the world, and I can do it, and I'll take care of it, and I'll control everything. And but wait a minute, hey, let people help you. You know, come in and join in and and um, co-create. It's not mm-hmm. all you're not all alone. Thank goodness, other people have good ideas too. And exactly. uh, so I think that. Exactly. that We've had a narcissism epidemic in this country in particular, I think, because I think a lot of people are finally starting to try to get themselves back because they've lost touch with their soul. They've been mm. so ingrained with 
like you said, technology or or being abused, you know, where they just felt like they were nothing. And so the first step of that is like, hey, I'm great, you know, and I'm the best. You know, <laughs> you know we got all the, the reality TV um, catty women and all this stuff um, and the bling and the and money. And, and these are first steps toward a discovery of the real sense of self. So That's narcissism right. and ego is sort of the sham version of self. Right, it's right. It's very br- um, delicate and right. imbalanced sense of self. So but true, I have so faith true. that people are, will grow. You know, they do grow. If they're given a chance, they will will grow. We're going to have to, that's for sure, right? <laughs> I think so. I mean, I, I honestly think that that old kind of consciousness is just will not function. It's not going to function. You know, um, mm-hmm. hierarchies in corporations are linear, right? But mm-hmm. the new forms are much more circular and flat, where it's all... A lot of people owning things at the same time and being responsible. They don't just have one leader. Um, so structures are changing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a good thing. Penny, I want to thank you. Um, I really enjoy always your books and your way of looking at things because I think it's very rooted in the spirit and in the beauty of the human spirit. So we thank you for that. Why don't you leave our listeners with where they can get information on your book and if there's yeah, any upcoming sure. tours that you might have. Yeah, I have um my website is just pennypierce.com and um mm-hmm. but Amazon and all the all the online book places have my books and there are 10 of them now I think. So um so that's easily available. Then next February we're doing a a Valentine's Day in in the um you know, down out of Florida here. And that will be with all the authors from my publisher with John Gray and a bunch of other people. So it should be great. Oh, wonderful. Well, congratulations and lots of success your way. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take good care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So pay attention, everyone, and um, begin to look at a deeper level of what these times are basically calling us to become for ourselves and for the world. Now remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. And we are here to love each other the same. So take good care. Let's have dance away from bliss. Bye-bye.